Welcome to the Wireless News Desk for March of 2020. You will be noticing a difference in the way the Wireless News Desk is delivered in the coming months. We'll be providing a News Desk video on the first Friday of each month. This is an interesting one because we have a couple of pieces of news that are really, really important to the 802.11 space. First of all, it's not a sure thing, but if the leaks are correct, it looks like 802.11 AY will be in the next iPhone. At least that's what the rumors are saying. So what is 802.11 AY? Well, it's the updated version of 802.11 AD. And so it's the 60 gigahertz 802.11 physical layer. And this gives you multi-gigabit speeds in close proximity. So it's really an in-room technology for the most part, but it can give you very high speeds. So this can be useful for a lot of scenarios, things like virtual reality and uh, high-speed gaming, video streaming, things like that. There are a lot of things like that in the consumer space. In the enterprise space, we'll likely see some use cases coming along as well when you have the devices that can use it, and that's the key. So with 802.11 AD, the devices just weren't there, and so you can't really implement something when there's not a large distribution of devices. There were a few laptops with 11 AD, and there were a couple of routers, consumer routers, with it. I think if we see it in a device like the iPhone, within two to three years, we'll start to see more use cases emerge for this in the enterprise space. So make sure you're watching for that as it's coming down the road. Now, there's also an interesting article that I came across at Gizmochina, I guess you'd say, on Wi-Fi 6 Explained. All you need to know about the 802.11 AX standard. Uh, first of all, big frustration about the nomenclature. Uh, 802.11 space capital AX is a little bit frustrating because it's actually 802.11 lowercase AX with no space uh, in the proper structure and format of this. But that's for those that want to know the difference between a standard and an amendment and that want to understand how the terminology is used in standards and amendments. For the rest of the world, it's not that big of a deal. And the main focus is on the fact that the Wi-Fi Alliance calls it Wi-Fi 6. One of the things that I noticed here in this particular post is that they suggested that there was enhanced speed brought to 802.11ax and they list as one of the reasons for this is multi-user MIMO. Their specific phraseology is for Wi-Fi 6, you have more lanes for each direction. This means with even more cars on the road, red, more devices on the network, the fact that there are more lanes means speeds are not reduced. Well, a lot of confusion can come out of phraseology like that. The fact is that OFDMA does sacrifice speed for the individual transfer in exchange for better speeds overall for all transfers. So OFDMA and multi-user MIMO if it was really being used, but we're not even going to talk about that because it's not really a major thing that's going to be a player, at least in the short term. So with OFDMA, what we do is we have the ability to take the channel and break it into components or break it into chunks. And one chunk can go to one station, another chunk to another station, and so forth. And so because we're doing that, if it's a 20 megahertz channel, we're not using all 20 megahertz for bits for one station. And therefore, it is actually reducing the momentary speed for that station. But if you think about it in perspective of time, when we talk about efficiency, when you think of perspective of time, overall on average, everyone will get their bits faster, okay? So it does not reduce, or rather it does not keep speeds the same from an individual station's perspective, but it keeps your overall speed higher, okay? So that's a good way to think about it. So OFDMA is not going to take away the reality that with more devices, you get reduced speed. You're still going to get reduced speed. It's simply overall and on average will not be as reduced as much as when you're forced to use a full 20 or 40 megahertz channel for an individual station. So again, OFDMA, chunks of the channel made available for different stations in a single transmission. 
Therefore, each of those stations is getting less data in a single transmission than they would if that whole transmission was just for them. But your efficiency overall should go up with OFDMA, as we've seen from the cellular networks. So I just wanted to mention that, and that is an important thing to make sure you have clarity on as you're thinking about OFDMA. OFDMA is not itself increasing speeds overall, it's increasing efficiency of how things are used. So that's the point of OFDMA. Can we get some increased speeds in 802.11ax? Sure, we have 1024 quadrature amplitude modulation. And so therefore we do have higher data rates. Now that is even more so than 256 quadrature amplitude modulation, an in-room only solution, but it is going to enhance the speed of those links that can maintain that. The final thing today is Broadcom. Broadcom ships the first Wi-Fi 6E chip for mobile devices. So Wi-Fi 6E, or I guess we'll say extended, is what the Wi-Fi Alliance has chosen to refer to the 6 gigahertz band as. And this is from the top of the 5 gigahertz band to the bottom of the 7 gigahertz band, a range of about 1200 megahertz of space that depending on your regulatory domain, different amounts of it will be available and different rules for how it's used. But it does open up a significant number of more channels. There's potentially more space there than we have in both 5 and 2.4 gigahertz combined. And so obviously, that's an important enhancement. So Broadcom did announce this new chip, and let me make sure I give you the accurate term for the chip. It is the BCM4389 chip, the BCM4389. They do not expect it to release until sometime in the fall of 2020. So they're saying they ship it in the headline, and then later on in the article, they let you know that it's going to ship in the fall of 2020, at least be in devices in the fall of 2020. So that's when you'll start to see it hit the market. So what this does then is open up that extra frequency space for use on your Wi-Fi networks. So these are some important things to know about what's going on in the wireless world. Now, just a quick note before I leave you, watch for the objectives for the new certifications that we just did the JTAs for. They'll be coming out in the next week. And those objectives are your blueprint to help you understand what's going to be covered in the new CWNA 108, as well as those new exams in the IoT track that we're releasing this year. So make sure you're watching for those. Thanks for joining me today. And I'll see you next month on the first Friday for another Wireless News Desk.